Hello, everyone. Today we are welcome Kyle McCoy into the Jersey Baseball Show to uh, get a chance to sit down with Kyle here as part of our Generation Next 2.0, or bigger and better. And Kyle is bigger and better at uh, six seven, I believe, right? Um, six five. All right. Well, we're going to make you six seven. Um, six five. Uh, still pretty, pretty much taller than me, that's for sure. Um, University of Maryland signee earlier in November. Uh, signed his letter of intent to play at Maryland, part of a great recruiting class for the Terps, Big Ten, Power Five, a lot of excitement, I'm sure, for you, pride of uh, 100 and Central this year, um, a lot of big things, I'm sure, in store there, as as always, but uh, I guess, first of all, welcome, and, and let's let's talk about Maryland first. Thank you so much for having me on the show, I appreciate it. Absolutely, so... Great class with the Terps this year. I'm sure there's a lot of excitement. You guys just did your official visit recently. And, uh, you know, how'd that journey go for you? How did you get connected with them? What what kind of sold you over the top on uh, College Park? And I uh, guess we're excited, right? Yeah. Um, so freshman year, uh, late June, uh, the Diamond Jacks, obviously, you know, they were able to get a lot of college programs in to come to Domination and come watch uh, all of us play. So um, obviously through playing at Domination, uh, Coach Corey Muscara, who was the pitching coach at the time, uh, found out about me, came to saw me throw, and uh, he started talking to me a little bit. And then fortunately enough, the Diamond Jacks actually had a – they brought their whole uh, program over for like a little tournament uh, over the weekend in late June down at Maryland. So it was kind of like a free visit for me. Basically, I was able to go down and kind of see the school, see the campus, kind of get a feel for the coaches and, I, you know, get to meet some of the players. And um, I just fell in love with it all. Like Coach Vaughn was an awesome guy. I mean, he's a really awesome, genuine guy. And uh, they were really preaching an awesome culture that I really wanted to be a part of. And the players really were bought into, you know, all, you know, the same path, same kind of culture. So it really just seemed like a great place. And obviously, like you said, the Big Ten, the academics are amazing there. So it's really a win-win situation on both ends. So it was just a great place to be. Yep. So you were an early, early uh, verbal then. Uh, yeah, I was July 9th of freshman year. Freshman going into sophomore, you're talking yep. about. Yep. Okay. So that's interesting because I know Zach – uh, Stitchway was on is on you know on the show earlier and um, he said you know similar as far as being an, an early decision and that means that you both you know as pitchers got to to know Coach Moose uh, Corey Mascara very well Corey was has been a guest here in the past too you know obviously just before this school year he took the the same you know job down at Wake Forest um, you know. I guess, you know, certainly did that. I mean, I, I know that didn't change anything necessarily, but, you know, did you feel like you kind of have to, you know, meet the new pitching coach, kind of, I said, prove yourself, but, but, you know, kind of get to know him too at that point. And, you know, obviously yeah. a lot of you, you'd already made up your mind, coach Vaughn, you know, coach Swope, um, you know, certainly lots of, lots of good things there, but, but did that change anything at all with the new pitching coach? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely it was a big surprise. I mean, Coach Muscara, like I said, was an awesome guy who was really bought into the program. And, you know, there wasn't any kind of doubt in my mind that he was, you know, not going to stay. So it was definitely a shock. But, you know, things happen, you know. It's all about life, you know, making adjustments. So, you know, it definitely was a big bummer to hear it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I knew Coach Vaughn and all those guys were going to find a great guy to come in, you know, kind of yep. take his spot. So I kind of had to put my faith in them, just like, you know, they put their faith in me, you know, offer me a scholarship to play for them. So I kind of put, you know, my faith in their hands and let them go find somebody. And Coach Morrison's a great guy. So, you know, they, they picked a great one, and I'm looking yeah. forward to, you know, having him. 100%. And uh, that, that environment of, of uh, you know, what they've, that culture they've created, certainly hope that that can get you to the next level, I'm sure, right? Yes, totally. Before we get there, though, we still got a senior year, 100 and central, um, you know, always in contention for, for state title. Um, I, I would imagine this year isn't going to be any different. No, totally. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. This year is really obviously, you know, senior year, obviously you want to go out with, the, you know, bang or whatever. But I definitely have, you know, a lot of hopes on this year. You know, a lot, all the guys are working really hard. 
obviously last year, you know, we lost to uh, Middletown South. So obviously I left a sour taste in our mouth. We weren't too happy about that. And, uh, you know, all the guys are really just, you know, kind of riding off that energy that came from that game and just, you know, working hard every day just to get better and get ready for that senior season. Absolutely. Now, uh, um, your goals, right? I mean, what do you, you, you've already gotten to work, I'm sure, on your winter stuff. Um, what are the goals for you individually, you know, between now and, you know, through the year to, to make sure you're ready to go for, uh, for, for school? Um, I definitely say, you know, right now, you know, obviously on the school standpoint, you know, just make sure the grades are up, you know, getting ready to make sure you, know, you get there for school. And then obviously from a baseball standpoint, uh, just taking one, one piece at a time, you know, right now I'm just focusing on, you know, getting better to make sure I'm healthy and you know, strong for opening day. And then basically just, you know, try to win every game I can for my team. I mean, like I said, this year is going to be a really exciting year, not only for me, but for the whole team itself. So, you know, I'm just going to try to go out there, you know, try to just win every game that I can. And then obviously root on my team for all the games that they got. And, uh, you know, the end goal is obviously state championship. I mean, I, I got a lot of a lot of faith and I have a lot of hope that, you know, we're going to win it this year. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go out there and try my best. And obviously, you know, however it turns out, it turns out. And then from there on, I'm just going to, you know, go into the summer, you know, throw, how, throw however many innings I need to, you know, just to keep my arm good in shape. And then, you know, when the fall comes and I head over to Maryland, you know, I'm just going to work my butt off to get ready for the spring. Definitely. Now you got to, you had the area game, area code game experience, right? Yep. That was not this summer. It was the year before or it was this? This summer too. Yeah. It was last okay. summer and this summer. Okay. Okay, so yeah, COVID messes up. Like, uh, yeah. I, I forget when things happen and, and yeah. all these other things. So you got to do the, uh, you know, going into 11th grade, going into 12th grade as well. Yep. yep. Tell us about what that experience was like, you know, both years. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what what you've gone through and, and, and some of the other local guys that you got to go with. But then, you know, what you, you know, as far as meeting guys around the country, getting friends, you know, to make friends with them too. I mean, it's... It, pretty awesome experience and to get to have it twice is is got to be something you'll always remember yeah definitely uh I definitely have to say you know last year when I got the invite I was really you know grateful and honestly it was just it was crazy to you know get invited to do something like that and I definitely say that last year was a lot more nerve-wracking than it was this year just because you know it was kind of my first time having you know go out there and perform on a big stage in front of a lot of people and competing against all the best players in the country Sure. So it was obviously, you know, a really crazy experience, but, you know, it went well, you know, everything went good. And it was awesome. You know, I got to meet most of those guys from the Northeast that were on my team for the first time. So, you know, I was able to create a little bit of a friendship with them and then, you know, catch up with them a little bit within the year. And then obviously going into this year, obviously it was still nerve wracking. You know, it's only getting better every year. But this year was definitely easier to be able to go in there and know that I did it before already once. And you just got to go out there and repeat it. And obviously every, everything went well again. You know, it was an awesome time. It was a blast. You know, the coaches were awesome. I learned a lot of great stuff from them. And, um, yeah, I mean, the friendships, you know, I know a lot of kids now that I didn't know before. And, you know, I I've, I've still stay in touch with a couple of them. You know, I, I see them here and there. And, yeah, I mean, it's just – it's something that, you know, you it's the game of baseball. You know, you make great friends. You make awesome friendships. And you meet a lot of great coaches, you know, who give you life lessons. So, Area Code Games is definitely something I'm very grateful to have an opportunity to do, but I'm not only one year, but be able to do it twice is also yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, growing up in, uh, going to Hunter and Central in the Flemington area puts you right in the, uh, right around the corner from Diamond Nation. And and, mm -hmm. and that's a place that certainly has had a, a big impact on you, you know, both on the field and certainly uh, your journey, but, but I'm sure also off the field as far as some of the lessons you've learned, right? So, so tell us about how uh, that facility, that place has impacted you. I guess you said you started out when you were uh, 11 with the Diamond Jacket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, Diamond Nation is another thing I'm truly grateful for. I mean, there's not a lot of kids, obviously, who get the opportunity to you know, get a facility where there's six turf fields that you can play on basically all year round. And then they also, uh, at the beginning, when I first joined there, had the dome over at Jack Cuss. So it was almost a win-win situation. It was year-round baseball that you got to do at a very high level, too, because, you know, there was a lot of great people there. And obviously the coaches were awesome. You know, we had Coach Cuss and all those guys. 
and they were um, they were really awesome. So I was able to really get good exposure and really get great coaches and mentors who kind of, you know, taught me the things, you know, that I need to know from a young age. And it kind of really helped me step up my game. I mean, if it wasn't for the Diamond Jacks, I don't know if I'd really be where I am today. They were really able to, you know, give me all the things that I needed to to grow. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just – it's crazy to think that, you know, you could live next to such a – you know, it's almost a dream facility. So uh, I'm definitely grateful to have that right here in my backyard, basically, and be able to go there whenever I need and have all the mentors and all the facilities that I need. It's like you got a minor league facility in your backyard. Yeah, exactly. Much. It's it's incredible. Yeah. Favorite memories of, uh, I, I guess it's really a hard question to ask because you got half a year left, your senior year, but to this point, favorite memories of uh, Hunter and Central Baseball? Um, I definitely say, um, like learning wise, I definitely say like as a freshman, I definitely think my freshman year was where I really learned like, truly obviously you know it was my first year of high school baseball so I was obviously learning what it's about but like really understanding like how much baseball really means to me because obviously you know going up till then like baseball is fun and all and you know you you have you get to play you know get to play travel ball and all that but high school ball really taught me like how much passion I really have for the game of baseball and how much like I really love to play and especially since I got to play with all my buddies that I grew up with and you know I went through all the grades with and you know being able to go out there with them and you know try to compete for something that's bigger than just uh, me is you know it was really incredible and you know I had great mentors um, you know I was able to you know go to uh, be on varsity and kind of see what you know it was like and see like what those seniors kind of you know did to prepare for the season and then you know they went out there and kind of showed me what kind of brotherhood it is to play so I was very grateful you know to learn those experiences and kind of like learn what it takes to be a leader on the team and then I definitely say the you know from the success standpoint uh last year and the uh when we played in the county finals against Pope John and uh, we ended up beating them I'd say that was definitely a big thing you know not only for me but for my teammates it was a big confidence booster and it was something that we all came out, you know, with huge smiles on our face because it was just all the hard work and all those days, you know, you put in the gym and everything really paid off against a really good Pope John team. So yeah. it was definitely something that, you know, would be very cher- we cherish very much for that one. Who were the, uh, who were the big seniors when you were a freshman? Uh, we had uh, Joey DiCiero, a left-hand pitcher who ended up going Old Dominion. Oh, oh do you, yeah. Uh, we had Luke Longo, who goes to NJIT. Uh, we had Ryan Fisher, who goes to NJIT as well. Uh, Pete Sofreda, who goes to Lafayette. Yeah. And then we also had uh, Luke Pizzico, who plays at Udell as a pitcher. Yeah. So we had a bunch of, you know, great guys who, you know, were brothers. They they did everything together, and they kind of told me what it's like. You know, yeah. they kind of took me under their wing and kind of taught me all the ins and outs of, like, what high school baseball is all about and, you know, what it takes to win. Pretty cool to see Fish and uh, and Luke bring it both up, both of them bring it up to NJIT and have their success too. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. It was awesome to watch that. You know, especially knowing them personally, it was definitely awesome, and it was uh, just you know crazy thing to say. So, so to be part of that and and you know be part of that for the whole way through. I mean, you, you get you know they always say tradition never graduates, and I think you probably have a better understanding of what they mean by that being at a place like Hundred and Central. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, we have a, you know, they always would preach me when I was a freshman, you know, you have to carry the baton, you know, you got to teach the people the way, you know, you got to earn everything you get. And it's, I mean, it's so true. I mean, I, I couldn't, you know, every year I kind of see it more and more. And I mean, it's, it's a game where, you know, everyone's got to be a part of it. You know, you can't win just based off the good talent. You got. you know, one guy can't win a baseball game. That's the great thing about the sport. It's got to be a team effort. Everyone's got to do their part. And, uh, I mean, you, you see it every day. I mean, the games you lose, you know, it's, it's a team loss. The games you win, it's a team win. I mean, no one can win a game by themselves. And, um, you know, I really have cherished that. And I've kind of tried to, you know, preach all the other kids when they, can, when they ask. And, when they, you know, I try to just tell them, you know, it's, it's a game where it's not only about the great players. It's also about, you know, the role players, the ones that got to step up in a big spot, you know. You always got to be ready for that big moment because, you know, when it's your time to shine, you got to be ready for it. You can't shy away from the big spotlight. So uh, I definitely think that that's that statement's very true. You know, you always got to be ready. The tradition will never leave. It's it's yeah. always going to be there. Yeah. And you don't get to where your goals are every year team wise without, you know, it's definitely. not one or two or three guys. You better have yeah. 
contributions from everybody or else that that goal isn't happening. Yeah, exactly. And not everyone's on their A game. I mean, the best players always have a bad day. So you always need those other guys that pick you up on those bad days. So I definitely, that's so true. Best player you played against? Oof. Um, I'd definitely say, I mean, I played against Tamar Johnson in the Baseball Factory All-American Games. I'd definitely say, obviously, you know, with him being the best player in the country, I definitely think he'd be he'd be up there. Uh, you know, all those South Stewart, all those guys, uh, Andrew Jones, I played against all those guys. So, I mean, all even, you know, Baseball Factory, area code games, I was able to play against all the best guys in the country. So it was it was really fun to be able to do that. What do you realize about yourself through all that competition? Um, I mean, I, the biggest thing I took away from it is, you know, I was able to compete with those guys. Like, I'm, I'm right there with the pack. I mean, when you go there, that's when you really get the reality check of whether or not, you know, you belong there or, you mm -hmm. know, what it is. And, you know, obviously I had my ups and downs in both, but realistically I had some success and that kind of showed me that, you know, I'm, I, I belong there and, you know, I belong in the pack with, you know, the best of players and, you know, all it means is to work even harder to try to be, you know, try to be the best. So it was definitely, you know, kind of a good confidence booster for me, but also a good reality check that like, you know, obviously you're good enough to be here, but also you got to work even harder to try to be, you know, that guy that everyone wants to be like, like you got to try to be like them. So it's definitely, you know, it was a double-edged sword where, you know, it helped benefit me in both ways. You want to be that Friday night starter, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Nothing better. Couple of random questions here before we uh, before we get going. Um, if you could be D one in any other sport, what's your choice? Uh, probably basketball. That was the other sport I played growing up. I played it all the way up until I got to freshman year of high school. Uh, it's just something else I enjoyed doing. I nothing wrong with picking up a basketball and shooting around. It's something I enjoy doing. So, so we, I mean, six five. I mean, I don't, I'm sure you weren't always six five, but I'm sure you were always pretty big. Yeah. What were you? Were you, were you more of an inside or outside player? Uh, yeah. I, I usually they put me on the inside. I'd be an inside guy, but you know, I always practice shooting the outside shots. I mean, okay. and that in today's day and age, you know, you see all the guys shooting the three pointers. You always want to be like them. So exactly. I'd still practice the outside shot, but I was definitely an inside the paint type of guy. You're like an NBA big man shooting threes. Yeah, exactly. That was the dream. Um, part of your pregame routine that you couldn't do without at this point. Um, I on, start say, on, on bump day, not, I don't, I don't, you're, yeah. you got the PL life pretty much. I don't care about your, your non-pitching days. Yeah. Um, I definitely say, um, weighted balls. I mean, I think the, the plyo balls, those definitely benefited me recently. Um, I didn't really use them much up until about two years ago. And I definitely saw a big jump and not only to my arm strength, but just like velocity in general. Uh, it definitely helped my velo get a big boost there and also me, you know, having good stamina and good arm health. So I definitely think, you know, using plyo balls is something that has made a big difference in my game, uh, really. And I think that if I didn't use them, I don't know if I'd be where I am. So I definitely think plyo balls are a game changer. Favorite game day meal? Oof. Uh, I'd say cheeseburger cheeseburger and fries uh, i love cheeseburgers my mom makes good cheeseburgers so usually in the spring you know the girl will be out and she'll be able to cook me some cheeseburgers so that's usually what i'd be eating before the games all right that's that's legit um wait you said before the games or after game Nah, i usually um have a couple uh last year since we had some virtual days uh, I'd be home right before, so I'd be able to have some food before. Okay. And then afterwards, usually I'd be able to go out with my buddies from the team and kind of have an after game, kind of hang out. Yeah. Um, pre-game uh, music, are you, or I should say, are you a pre-game music guy or are you, uh, you know, let me do my own thing, stay away from me? What's your, uh, what's your pre-game mentality on bump days? No, uh, I enjoy some music. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, the type of guy who likes to hear some like, good uh, hype up music. Uh, it's some, you know, mentality wise, you know, you like to get yourself pumped up, get the energy flowing, blood flowing, kind of get that positive, you know, kind of flow going through. So I definitely listen to music before I, I go out there and pitch. Um, 
favorite quote or piece of advice that you've gotten through the years that's kind of stuck with you and resonated the most? Um, favorite piece of advice. Um, I'd definitely say Derek Jeter's famous quote of there may be guys who are more talented than you, but no one should ever work harder than you. Uh, it's like I said, you know, every year you kind of see it more and more. And there's definitely been a lot of kids who I've, you know, met in the past or recently, you know, who've had more talent than I did. But, you know, there's a lot of kids who didn't have much talent that worked really hard and they got to where they were today and, you know, they've succeeded. And, you know, every great player doesn't, you know, make it big off of just talent. You know, they all the hard work and all the, you know, extra days that they put in that other people's didn't is what paid off. So I definitely think that that's something that I kind of like to keep in the back of my head that I may not be the most talented, but if I work hard enough and no one outworks me, you know, I'll, I'll be great one day. So I kind of like to use that mentality to kind of fuel me every day. What's one thing that most of us don't know about Kyle McCoy? Oof. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm only lefty in when I throw. I do everything else in my life right-handed. I write righty. I kick righty. I, I only throw lefty. I, I do everything else right-handed. So it's a really whack thing. My whole family is right-handed. They do everything righty. I do everything righty. But the only thing that I do different is I throw left-handed. Uh, my dad is the exact same way. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, you, uh, you golf? Yeah, I just started. My buddies were golfers so they kind of introduced me into the golfing game you do that righty too or is that a no that's the only other thing i do left yeah swing lefty about that okay okay um that's good that, that is a, actually a good answer um yeah. if every day this is my favorite question now if, if every day activities were olympic sports what would you be getting a gold medal in Oof, every day activities um I would definitely say laughing, dude. I, I laugh every day. I mean, <laughs> my buddies always get me to chuckle every day. So I, there's something I do every day that I would get a gold medal and be laughing. I, I always have a good time, you know, talking to my buddies, you know, getting a good laugh. It's a good way to go through life, too. It is. It's awesome. It always you know, keeps me upbeat, keeps me going. 100%. We wish you the best this winter, certainly, as you go through your ramp up for uh, what should be an awesome senior year. Um, look forward to watching you uh, and the Red Devils go after a, uh, a state title. And and certainly beyond that, um, we look forward to watching you in the Big Ten down at, uh, at Maryland um, when you come up here to Rutgers, which is actually another cool thing about the Big Ten now is getting to play a couple of games in Jersey and uh, going for uh, for the College World Series and, and and see where we can where we can get. So best of luck, Kyle. Thank you so much for having me.